Bhutan, the country at the centre of the Himalayas, fabled land of Shangri-La, earthly paradise, a permanently happy utopia. However, many Bhutanese people are distinctly unhappy. India must allow our passage. Bhutan is our homeland. It's more precious than my life. Seventeen years have passed. One out of seven Bhutanese lives in a foreign land. On the 28th of May 2007, tens of thousands of people started demonstrating along the Mechi Bridge at the Nepal-India border, asking for a route home through the Indian border. The demonstrators were Bhutanese refugees who must go through India to be able to go home. It's exactly the same way along which they walked 17 years ago when they were evicted from Bhutan. 15,000 refugees embarked on the long march home. But their journey was soon interrupted by the Indian security forces. They blocked the refugees' path with strong violence. They've been shot. How many times? Three, three. Casualties cropped up as the Indian forces started shooting. How many are shooting at you? Two. Where have you been shot? On my hip. Were they rubber bullets or real ones? Real bullets. India allowed these refugees to pass through its territory to reach Nepal when they were kicked out of Bhutan. But it would not allow them safe passage home again. In the course of the violent clashes, hundreds were wounded and one person at the end was shot dead by the Indian security forces. This is the furthest refugee camp from the Mechi Bridge, where the family of the deceased lives. Did you have your son's funeral? Yes, it was finished today. Where did you have it? At home. He died young. It makes me so sad. The mother is also inconsolable in her grief at her son's death. His death at the hands of the Indian security forces was a shock, not only to the family, but the whole camp. The victim was the fourth son of Mr. Siwa. The 18-year-old boy who went to Mechi Bridge, dreaming of going back to his homeland, came back as a dead body. His funeral was held according to Hindu custom, his body cremated before the whole community. His father shaved his head according to Hindu custom. I think he died because he thought his death could make his parents get home. I think he thought it's worth dying if he could make that happen. His parents were farmers back in the homeland, but now they make a living from sowing. The son's wish to make his parents go home cost him his life. Perhaps his biggest desire was to see his parents holding farming tools, not sewing materials. It only takes five hours by car from Nepal to Bhutan. However, the Bhutanese refugees spread across seven camps in eastern Nepal have not been able to return for 17 years. When we visited one camp, the refugees explained their grief. Bhutan 
If I have to die, I want to die in Bhutan. We don't want to die here. We don't want to live in Nepal, nor do we want to live in India. We want to die where we were born and where our identity is. Currently, they are stateless people because the Bhutanese government does not recognize them as their citizens. This is a Bhutanese ID card. Our ID cards have been taken away. These documents are the ones I kept in secret. The ancestors of these refugees are the people who migrated to Bhutan 400 years ago. They became official Bhutanese citizens in 1985. However, in 1990, the Bhutanese government suddenly changed the law and defined these people as illegal immigrants. This is my ID card. I'm a Bhutanese citizen. I have a right to go to Bhutan. I must go, no matter what. One of the causal factors was religion. Bhutan is a Buddhist country, but those of Nepalese origin believe in Hinduism. Religious discrimination was soon transformed into ethnic discrimination. Eventually, in 1990, the Bhutanese government categorized them as foreigners, arguing that no firm evidence of their residency in Bhutan prior to 1985 could be found. The current king of Bhutan is from Tibet. It was only 150 years ago that the Tibetans migrated to Bhutan, whereas the Nepalese came to live in Bhutan 400 years ago. But 400 years history has not been recognized. Once defined as illegal immigrants, the Bhutanese of Nepalese origin were expatriated to India across the border, who then deported them to Nepal. We had no intention of coming to Nepal. We didn't have any reason to do so. The Bhutanese government killed the people and burned the houses down all day and night. We couldn't even protest. We had no time to bring in the cattle with us like cows and chickens, and we had to run away, even when one child hadn't come home from school. All in all, more than 100,000 Bhutanese people of Nepalese origin left their homeland to avoid persecution, and they became refugees. Today, Bhutan still doesn't see these people as its citizens. What's worse is that they try to evict the remaining Bhutanese of Nepalese origin. Bhutan, the land of Shangri-La, but its door has been closed to these refugees for 17 years. They've lived here, in this makeshift camp built in a jungle, isolated from the outside world. They've lost their freedom and are living a life of poverty and misery. They can't farm because they have no land and can't get jobs outside the camp. A whole day's work sewing puts just one cabbage on the table. There's also an acute shortage of water. The tap water would only run a short while and then stop. They depend on charity handouts, which don't provide a lasting solution, but just take the edge off their hunger. But it's not the strained and destitute circumstances that make their life miserable. It's their nostalgia for home and the families they left behind. Vismaral, who was once the head of a village in Bhutan, has now become an old man. I wore this costume from 1981 to 1990. This is a traditional costume of Bhutan, which I used to wear when I was head. Now it's torn here. Why do you still keep it? 
I keep it so I can wear it on my way back home to Bhutan. The homeland that he's been longing to return to in his traditional costume is less than 200 kilometers from the bridge. According to the refugees, India is blocking their way because it fears the loss of economic and political influence over Bhutan if it accepts the refugees' requests. India is blocking the refugees' path. They didn't block them coming to Nepal, but why are they blocking the way back home? It doesn't make sense. We've been urging India not to block them. India has done more than just block them. The refugee camp is full of people wounded by the gunfire of the Indian security forces. They suffer acute pain without painkillers. My father told me he didn't think I'd be able to come back alive. We felt lucky that I was at least alive when there was someone shot dead. We cried together. My father cried and I cried as well. He was lucky to be back alive. But for the rest of his life, he'll be maimed. Life at the camp will be much harder from now on. <laughs> the refugees can do nothing but wait until the time comes to go back home. Soon they will face the monsoon, where they have to shore up their houses against heavy windstorms. As the years have passed, they've got used to the monsoon. But, they say, they will never get used to life as refugees. The pain of Bhutanese refugees is enduring. Our rights are being infringed by Bhutan and India right now. We are living a life that is worse than that of animals. Please help us escape this hell. We won't forget your mercy towards us for the rest of our life.